don't want to correct. Come on, I don't understand. The one I don't understand. I don't understand. You face me, face me in English. Don't come that bullshit. You're about to speak to me in English. You face me. I don't think I make a better than you. I don't make a better than you. I don't make a better than you. I'm trying. I will slap your fucking face. Trying to be. I think you mean things about me on Twitter every day. I see. I share that fucking face. Oh, you're not even in your bag. You're in the ego. Are you bad news? Do you understand? I'm still in pain. Because when she went on you making need, her voice, you need shades. I need more shades. You also need. I feel like if it pissed me off, was like, oh, does I want to use somebody's star? That trauma, she has to make sure that they open WhatsApp. Things I have learned is number one, um, salt also looks like sugar. Hey, what was that dumb question? that Uti asks Laura about redemption. Oh, Laura, do you feel redeemed now? Oh, like, that was so freaking dumb. Okay, you know what? Let's, let's call a spade a spade. From my frank opinion, guys, what I have seen so far with this Real Housewives of Lagos reunion show is that there's been a calculated attempt yes to to label caroline as the villain of the season of the show but guess what they failed they failed woefully because <laughs> from the clips that they showed of caroline and Chalmers blossoming friendship on the show and with the narrative the stories the the argument the, the the explanations everything the conversations that was had on the reunion show in this part too guys it just simply labeled Chioma as the villain yes as the villain as that one person that did not really understand the true meaning of the concept of friendship i mean there were a lot of things that was just on full display in this part two of the reunion show guys the fact that Uti was blatantly ignoring asking caroline the necessary questions or even chioma guys it was so ridiculous it was simply ridiculous and there's a lot i'm going to be sharing with you all on this particular episode of frankly speaking with Gloria elijah i'm sure that i'm not the only one that's ready to vent right now there's a lot of you watching this video that's really irate and just as i am please go ahead watch this video and um, don't forget to share your own thoughts in the comment section below okay and um let's get into it but but before i start you're welcome back to my youtube channel my name is Gloria elijah and this is frankly speaking with glory i am the girl with the T. Yes, on this channel, we share the most detailed, factual, accurate analysis of reality TV shows, movies, and trending social issues. So if you are interested in that kind of content, please do not forget to hit the red subscribe button to become a part of this family. Yes, do not forget to do exactly that. It's free and easy. Just do exactly as you see on your screen and if you always want to receive a lot of my videos whenever i upload a new one guys it's quite easy as well simply search for frankly speaking with gloria elijah on youtube or you can as well um hit the white bell button that is called the post notification bell once you do any of those two and um, whenever i upload a new video you will be the first to receive a lot of those videos another exciting information is that tomorrow is saturday and you know what happens on here we have our fswg saturday youtube live stream guys trust me you do not want to miss out i call it our family meeting that's where we come together we dissect we analyze we interact we do all of that about every single topic that happened during the week either on or off this channel so please make it a date with us tomorrow by 3 p.m wat do not miss out and then guys finally for the major news that woke me up this morning the major news that got me all excited i am still excited and in as much as i am really infuriated at the part two of the real housewives of lagos reunion show this particular news has been giving me butterflies in my tummy guys now just to cut the long um, story short your girl got a feature interview with the nigerian tribune newspapers ah hey you know what guys <laughs> Just check in the description box of this video and you will find the link to that interview. I am super excited, guys. Oh my God. Let's just get into this video. We'll talk about it towards the end of this video. So just watch till the end. So the show opened with the issue of Toyin's claim that Choma was being competitive towards her with regards to their fashion. Choma constantly, deliberately coming late just to make 
a grand entrance whenever the ladies had a group gathering or a group event and we also saw clips of Toyin's confessionals where she actually did say a lot guys calling Choma a child calling Choma um, a wannabe queen of fashion or something like that saying a whole lot guys actually I mean we've actually analyzed and dissected all of those Toyin's crazy insane um, confessionals and um, we also saw their little banter during their sip and paint um, gathering with um, what's her name now Mariam where um, Tony still in her confessionals was um, saying that oh is Choma that ugly you know Choma came earlier but then she stayed at the bathroom you know Padre in her face so Choma are you that ugly guys we saw all of those clips yeah we saw all of those clips and then Uchi started his questioning with Toyin. Now, as usual, Toyin got defensive and a major excuse was that um, even though she had come after Choma had arrived, she had seen Choma in the elevator, but then by the time she got into the whole of um, Laura's fashion show, she was surprised not to see Choma there because um, Choma was stuck up in the toilet powdering her face. And then she went on and on saying a lot in the true Toyin's fashion. Now, um, Choma in her own defense had said, that she has an oily face so she does not see anything wrong in her powdering in her face instead of going into the hall with an oily face that she was not going to be bullied by Tony to be a certain way or even act a certain way now guys that was the point where both of them were talking over and at each other they were not even talking in one after the other guys the usual thing Gemma, you're actually, you want to talk, talk, talk and you don't want people to talk or to express themselves because you know how to speak English it's not about English it's about English Toyin talking, Choma also talking, and then Toyin made a very, very interesting statement, which, in my opinion, was quite petty and very, very irrelevant to the conversation. That oh, um, then she had gone to Brass and Coppers and she had ate bad meat. But then she had not made any fuss about it so she did not understand why um chioma would go and say that oh at laura's fashion show um she Tony was showing her her own fashion pieces whilst the show was going on now guys at that point in time as i said i felt like that was completely irrelevant and petty of Tony. number two i noticed that Tony is a sort of person that when she gossips about other people she would rather that person she told such a gossip takes it to their grave than to open their mouth and talk about it. So at that point in time, it was just very obvious that our annoyance with Chioma was that, oh, um, because of Chioma spilling the tea about what she had done with Chioma at that fashion show, Laura's fashion show, she had gotten dragged on social media endlessly, guys. Yes, she was dragged. I remember we talked about it on this channel as well. And Toya had further claimed that the only reason she was showing Chioma um samples inspirations as she called them inspirations of her designs um at laura's fashion show was because chioma had told her to make some fashion pieces for her now chioma was screaming that that was a lie that she did not ask tony to make her any fashion piece at laura's fashion show according to chioma it was not at that point in time that even if she did it was based off the premise that for every time she dressed up to join the ladies in their gatherings in their events Tony was that one person that would constantly say nasty things about her looks about what she's wearing and about her lateness you know so she felt like okay fine since you're always talking down on what i wear you know calling them inappropriate so you should at least design something for me to wear let me see now typical of Tony, just in a true twins fashion Toyin was raising her voice. Toyin was saying a lot. Toyin was complaining a lot. Not once. Okay, I'm done with this conversation. This your, um, when you're ready to be honest with me. Who are you? 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 Who are design for her to even went as far as saying that she did not have a fashion line so when did she show Shoma her own fashion line and both of them they continued banting at each other you know attacking with words saying a lot of things now guys the highlight for me was Caroline's facial expression 
Caroline obviously did not really know what was happening on that day at um, Laura's fashion show. So Caroline's special expression was that of shock, like, wow, I'm amazed. I did not know that any of these things were happening. But Toyo was saying a lot of things calling Choma a bad person, a mean person. And she even went as far as making reference to Caroline, telling Choma that, listen, I am not Caroline that you bring that kind of energy to. I am going to treat your F up. And that was when Toyo stood up to go and slap Choma. I don't think I think I'm better than you. Watch your mama. I do not better than you. I'm trying. I will slap your mama. Do you think I'm better than you? What are you saying? What are you saying? What are you doing, Toyo? Because uh, Mariam had gotten upset and walked out because these two people kept on going at each other, bantering, 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 going back and forth. And um, the ladies were saying, okay, it's okay, let's move on, let's move on. But they kept on going at each other. So Mariam, once again, in my opinion, trying to create some highlights, trying to make a statement that, oh guys, remember me? Hey, hi, hi, I'm Mariam, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm part of the show. <laughs> Don't ignore me. I will not be ignored. Guys, I'm sorry, but that was exactly what I saw. So she stood up and walked out of the set. And um, after all the bantering, tempers had cooled off, Uti was calling Mariam to come back to join them on the set. And Mariam was still doing Shakara, like she was still hesitant to come back. And then Uti said, okay, I'm coming to come and get you. So it was the moment that Uti had walked away from the set to go and bring Mariam back that um, these two ladies, they started going at each other again. And then Tony stood up to go and slap Chioma. But then luckily for Chioma, <laughs> Iyabo came to block. And then the bouncers on set, they came to block as well. But then something quite adorable, or should I say admirable, happened. Now, Caroline did not take the fact that Chioma and her had a beef on ground, right? To keep quiet or even to mind her business. No, on the contrary, she had also added her voice. She had also sort of, you know, defended Chioma, telling Tony to stop, saying, Tony, stop. What you're doing is wrong. Stop. Take it easy. And guys, I found that quite interesting about Caroline, guys, because this is the same Caroline that just a few minutes ago, obviously, on the same set, she had had her own altercation with, and Shoma had sat down there with a yabo laughing sheepishly, laughing, you know, making faces, you know, kind of like, oh yes, let, let her get served, let her get served, you know, that kind of beefing laughter. But then when it was now Shoma's turn to get beat down, <laughs> beat down properly, Caroline stood up for her, even though Caroline did not like physically stand up for Chioma, but Caroline raised her voice, yes, telling Toyin that what Toyin was doing was wrong. Ha! Guys, honestly, you know what? Accolades, accolades to Caroline. She try you, if it's me, ha, me too. I will keep quiet. Let she too get served. And me too, I will sit down and laugh at Chioma that she's about to get big down. After all, it was the same Chioma in the last episode of the season that was jeering at Caroline that, oh, I should have let Iyawa beat you. I should have let all of them beat you. I should have let that. She was running her mouth. But now on the reunion show, she was about to get beat down. And Caroline raised a voice for her. Women supporting women. Ha! I mean, guys, for real, that moment was really intense. I need to drop my team off so that I can describe the moment properly with my hands that moment believe me it was really intense and i kept on screaming that if it wasn't for the human defenses that choma had surrounding her a yabo and the numerous bouncers even i think mariam actually ran out at that point in time um, including uti if it wasn't for those people ah toin would have by <laughs> She would have dealt with Chioma because Chioma did not see it coming and Tony was really fast, guys. Tony was really fast and the Yabba was also very fast to block Tony because Tony's house was already getting close to Chioma's face. Ah, by now, we would have probably been seeing and hearing of lawsuits from Chioma herself. Of course, she's a lawyer. She's from a big home. Yes. So we would have been hearing of lawsuits. And Tony was so pissed. She left the set. She went to the corridor because according to her, Chema was lying. For her, she said that Chema was lying. She said that Chema was lying, that they should play the recording. Chema was saying also that they should play the recording. Now, the, the bone of contention was that, oh, Chema was saying that she never asked Toyin to make pieces of her, um, fashion pieces for her at Laura's fashion show, whilst 
Tony was arguing that it was a blatant lie that Choma had actually asked her at that point in time to create pieces for her as she was showing Chioma inspirations of what she had done on her phone. That Choma knew the truth, that Choma was lying. Now guys, to be very honest with you, I don't know who is lying because we only saw Toei showing Chioma things on her phone. We did not hear the audio. So the, we did not hear the audio. It wasn't really audible. We did not hear anything that was happening. So I cannot really say that, okay, this person is lying and that person is lying. But what I saw was that if not for the human defenses surrounding and shielding Chioma, <laughs> Chioma would have gotten beat. Okay. Moving on to the next conversation after a lengthy break, because guys, it was obvious that there was a lengthy break. Yes, it was not possible that um, Tiana's tempers seriously just simmered down all of a sudden. Nah, it was a lengthy break, according to also um, Uti's countenance. But then the next conversation was about Choma and Caroline's friendship. Guys, to be very frank with you, I got really emotional when I was watching the clip because um, whoever put together that clip did a great job. They put together clips of Choma and Caroline's, you know, beautiful friendship. Them, um, Caroline especially hyping Chioma a whole lot. I mean, guys, it was very obvious that Caroline really loved Chioma. Like, she loved Chioma to bits. We saw the clips um, at uh, Mariam's um, dinner party. Was it Mariam's dinner? No, it was um, Chioma's Abuja event that she hosted where both of them were saying nice things about each other and Laura was green with envy. We saw that. We also saw, guys, we saw a lot of beautiful moments. We even saw the business conversation that we're having um, at um, Caroline's in quotes, place of work where she was shopping for interior um, pieces for a client's house. And these people were talking about business, guys. We just, it just goes to show that these people had something solid. And if not for, he said, she said, them say, them say, that one, that one wanting to join a clique and not wanting to join a clique, you know, the beef, the banters here and there, these three people would have been solid business partners today, just as Choma has with her very good friend and sister, Kikau Sunde. So, Uti had gone ahead to ask both of them what had attracted them to each other. For Choma, she cannot really say exactly what it is, but what she knew was that at that point in time, they just sort of clicked. And the first time they probably had a conversation was um, at Tiana's baby's product launch. That was in episode one, when um, all the ladies had met for the first time at Brass and Coppers. And then afterwards, um, she and Caroline, they had gone down to good hair space and they had a lengthy conversation. And that was where they realized that, oh, they had a lot of things in common and they really clicked. Now for Caroline, the first thing for her was the fact that both of them, they were Cancerians and she was, she had actually patronized Chama's business um, a couple of years back or some years back, as she put it. And she was thinking that she was going to get a cold reception from Chioma when she met Chioma, but then Chioma gave her the warmest smile. Chioma gave her the warmest welcome. And that was what attracted her, you know, to that friendship with Chioma. And then there was a conversation about the red flags in their relationship. Now we saw clips of um, Chioma accusing Caroline of throwing her under the bus um, at the intervention meeting that Iyabo had called for the ladies to address Laura's excesses towards them from the start of the season's show. Now, in, that, in those clips, guys, we know what ensued. Choma was accusing Caroline of um, throwing her under the bus just to win an argument with Laura. And on that same clip, we've seen how um, Caroline had um, apologized over and over and over again. And we also saw Choma's confessionals of Choma saying that when you are my friend, I do not want to hear them say them say whatever them say, let it be Choma saying it. And then we also saw another clip of Choma's confessional or not, not really a confessional. She was actually directly telling Caroline that, listen, I am the sort of friend that even though we have issues, your secrets are safe with me. Guys, you see that part, you see that, that part of that clip, that was the, that, that was the killing part for me because towards the end of this reunion show, Choma completely did the reverse of what she had claimed to be on that clip. But we're not going to jump the gun right now. Let's just, first of all, address this part of the conversation. So Uti had first gone ahead to ask Chioma what had been the red flags for her in her friendship with Caroline. 
And Choma had responded that it was obviously the part that Caroline had thrown her under the bus at that yeah, intervention, yeah, with the rest of the ladies. You know, Caroline using an information that she had given to her about Laura months back that for her, that was a no-no because she's a lawyer friend. And the fact that um, Caroline is saying that she's not a lawyer friend, that she does not agree with that, you know, that those were the red flags for her. And then, Uti had asked Caroline. And for Caroline, there had never been a red flag because for her, Choma had never given her any issues. Um, she and Choma, they were good friends. Choma was not a problem because at that point in time, a problem was Laura. Laura was the one that was giving her issues and even herself, she did not even understand why Laura was all of a sudden having issues with her. So for Choma, there was no red flag and there was no red flag because she was not looking for any red flags at all. And you know guys, when Caroline made that statement, I honestly, it gave me some kind of sense. Yes, it gave me some kind of sense that, to be very honest, us as humans, I feel like it is when you look for something that you find that thing sometimes, not in all cases. And I feel like Caroline was not necessarily looking for a red flag in Chioma. I feel like if she had actually looked for it, she probably would have found something, but she wasn't looking. Yes. And Chioma saying that she saw that as a red flag. I was wondering like, okay, Chioma, why didn't you see it as Caroline? looking for an alibi as Iyabo put it and guys that was the part where i really appreciated Iyabo because um uti had asked Iyabo what she thought about that and even though initially Iyabo did not want to say anything she was doing hmm, hmm, hmm. i loved the fact that Iyabo you know was very very frank about it according to Iyabo caroline was obviously looking for an alibi you know in our argument with um laura and it's not like it's something strange it's something that girls do yes your friend that told you something about someone you want to win an argument and so you are looking for an alibi you want your friend to agree with you and guys that was what i said okay maybe not in the same way but that was my own line of argument when i analyzed that particular episode i think it was episode nine of the show yes i had said that the only thing that Choma could have done was to just keep quiet yeah, just keep quiet. And then afterwards, just as she rightly did, address the issue with Caroline. But then right on that spot saying, ah, Caroline, you know, making it look like, oh, Caroline is lying. For me, I felt like that was wrong. Toma talking about, oh, Caroline breaking the girl code. No, she broke the girl code first. Knowing fully well that whatever Caroline was doing at that point in time was in both of their best interests. Because of course, guys, we knew that Laura was really terrorizing those two ladies at that point in time in fact not even that point in time only but throughout the season and of course uti had asked mariam the same question how she felt about a friend throwing a friend under the bus yes and mariam of course has said ah if it's me i will not agree oh ha i said okay mariam calm down we've heard you anyways the conversation moved on to the girl's trip to dubai and guys i'm gonna be frank with you this is the part where i'm gonna really drag uti and the producers too yes because they deserve it so the clip started with caroline losing her bracelet if you all recall caroline had lost her bracelet right from the airport according to caroline that bracelet is worth about is it forty three thousand dollars or forty eight thousand dollars i'm not really sure but it's about forty something thousand dollars it's a diamond bracelet um, we also saw clips of, what's her name now, Maria complaining about the size of the bed in the room that they gave her. I think in the villa that they stayed, that room was the children's room. Uh, with regards to Caroline's missing bracelet, still on the clip, we also saw um, clips of Tony making a lot of insensitive, you know, comments during her confessionals about Caroline losing her bracelet. Guys, we all watched that episode, so I don't think there's any need for me to go into it again, but all of Tony's statements were very, very insensitive. Now, I was also expecting the producers to, you know, add Iyabo's insensitive statement about Caroline's missing bracelet as well to that clip, but they omitted it. They did not add it. Anyways, um, moving on, quite shockingly for me, Oti started that conversation with Mariam's banter, you know, with Tony about her small bed. And they talked about it, they played about it, they just playfully addressed 
the issue. It was nothing serious. Of course, Tony and Marianne, they are friends. And then Uti, as if it was an afterthought, moved on to Caroline and asked Caroline if she ever found the bracelet. Emails, um, so production sent emails as well. It wasn't found, unfortunately. My apologies. That's fine. Sorry. Uh, hopefully you get another fancy one. Amen. Uh, Dubai, Dubai, Dubai. I'm going to be very honest with you. The way Uti asked the question, it came across as though he was being sarcastic about showing concern about Caroline's missing bracelet. But he asked the question anyways, if Caroline ever found her missing bracelet. And Caroline said no, that she sent emails or she sent emails rather. Um, production also sent emails. I think they sent it to the airport, but they said they never did found it. And then lo and behold, that was where Uti died that conversation. And guys, here I was in shock. My mouth was left ajar. And I thought, I don't understand. Who should I drag at this point? Please tell me, who should I drag? Is it Uti? Is it the producers? Because that was crap. That was the most ridiculous thing ever. From that clip that they played, a lot of things were said. Tony making a lot of insensitive remarks during her confessionals about Caroline's missing bracelet and Uti not even having the, the decency to ask Caroline how she felt about Tony's remarks, about even asking Tony why she made such remarks about Caroline, or even if, at least, if the producers had even gone ahead to play the clip of Iyabo making that very insensitive, disgusting statement about Caroline's bracelet, at least playing that and then asking Iyabo why she made that statement. Because guys, if we all recall, there's been no explanation so far about any of those things. But of course, these ladies, they've been granting interviews on different podcasts here and there off the show. Now we're trying to focus on the show, right? We're trying to focus on the things that has been happening on the show. And then these people, Uti producers, they decided not to address the serious issues giving more airtime to the attention-seeking Mariam to talk about a freaking child's bed. For me, that was rubbish. Honestly, that was rubbish. And extremely insensitive of both Uti and the producers. Yes, at that point in time, guys, I strongly felt like, hey, there's nothing anybody is going to tell me. At this point, it's very obvious that there is a conscious and deliberate attempt to paint and portray and label Caroline as the liar that she has been accused of and as the villain of the season. And in my frank opinion, that is very, very disgusting on all levels. And guys, the, the most disgusting part said for me was when the clips were being played and Uti was laughing. He was laughing. Yeah, I understand. Mariam's part with um, Toyin was quite hilarious, yes, but when Toyin was talking about the bracelet during her confessionals, Uti was laughing. At that point in time, guys, it was still very obvious that this guy obviously took on this role of the host of the reunion show, having his own selfish bias in mind, not coming there with an open mind to make sure that issues were accurately and properly and decently, most importantly, addressed. So when you see him asking questions to the likes of Tony and Laura, you see every single energy of bias flowing through his veins. And once again, I must commend Caroline for not reacting. Yeah, I mean, she saw all of Tony's confessionals. I'm sure that she has actually even seen it before the reunion. But she didn't react. She was quiet. And I said, once again, Caroline keeps proving these people wrong. She be they say that Caroline is camera perfect. Eh, we are seeing the camera perfection now. She was quiet. Did not react. Decided to be the bigger person. <sighs> Calm down, Gary. Calm down. Anyways, the next issue that was addressed was the... Iyabo and Caroline's drama, guys. I mean, this is that one conversation that we've all been waiting for with bated breath. Yes, we all want to know or wanted to know if production had um, footage of that entire episode. But then sadly, there's no footage as none was played. So Iyabo was actually right when she said that the camera crew had gone to sleep in their own apartment, which was like miles and miles away from their own villa. 
But then, Iyabo had taken the floor and had talked a lot about everything. Now, where she placed emphasis on the most was on the fact that um, she needed space to heal that Caroline did not give her the space to heal because Caroline kept on coming to come and apologize, you know, that she was really hurt. People are different, which is quite understandable. And she was right in saying that, that people are different. Which, guys, if you all recall, when I analyzed that in Yabo's podcast interview, I said the exact same thing, that people are different. People handle offenses in very, very different ways. And the smart and emotionally intelligent thing that should have been done at that point in time was for Chioma especially to have allowed the two warring parties to simmer down in their anger, to simmer down in their rage. And then when all tempers were cool, then Chioma could have gone ahead to play the role of the lawyer friend, you know, telling Caroline to please go ahead and, you know, apologize to Iyabo. And then Caroline would do that at her own time, at her own pace. So when Iyabo kept on going on and on about, oh, Caroline raised her voice, Caroline shouted that Caroline's sticking to apologize, Caroline, you don't give me space to heal, I, it was a terrible point in time for me in Dubai. Guys, the one question that was in my mind was, so Iyabo, whose fault was it? Whose fault was it that you did not have time to heal? Because obviously, Caroline was not ready to go and apologize immediately. But then Shoma took it upon herself, carried Oshika, put it on, on top of her head, and kept on pushing, kept on forcing, kept on cajoling, kept on scolding, kept on reprimanding Caroline to go and apologize. Which Caroline did over and over and over again, whether it's even more than three times self. And even the gift, Iyaba was saying that she did not want the gift, that it was Choma that was cutting eye for her to accept the gift. Oh, when she overheard their conversation, blah, 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 she knew and concluded that Caroline's apologies were not sincere. Now, guys, Caroline obviously was trying to defend herself, but she was not given the chance to. And it was at that point that Caroline was trying to explain herself that Marianne decided for the hundredth time to, to shine, which she did not because Caroline did not give her the floor or even the expected reaction to shine. So it was at that point in time that Mariam decided that she wanted to return the gift that Caroline had given to her from the very get-go. So Mariam had asked Uti to help her bring the gift from behind their seat. I don't really, I really want to explain this gift. Oh, that is the gift I gave her that she returned and that is fine by me. No, you forgot something else. There's an envelope there. Mary, why are you uh, had brought it, they're giving it to Caroline and then guys, I loved what Caroline did. Caroline said, you know what? Hold on. Let me say what I want to say. And Mariam was like, oh, Uti asked me a question. You should open the gift. Blah, blah, blah. But I loved the fact that Caroline laid it to Iyabo. That, listen, that apology, all of that apology, they were sincere. They came from my heart. They were sincere. I know you needed space, but they were sincere. They came from my heart. And guys, that was what automatically died that Iyabo and Caroline's conversation. And once again, I was disappointed like really disappointed in Uti that Uti did not probe, did not follow up with a question to Chioma about giving Iyabo space to heal before pushing for Caroline to go and apologize and make peace with Iyabo. And once again, there we had Uti faltering in his job. He had just one job, probe, 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 ask, ask, ask questions. But Uchi was not doing any of that, which once again made me doubt if this dude really watched the show analytically, knowing fully well that he was going to take on the role of the host. Did he really go and rewatch the show again to have an open mind about how to address the issues that were to be raised during the reunion show? In my mind, I doubt. So Mariam had gone ahead to explain that the reason she was returning Caroline's gift was because um, Choma had told her um, that Caroline had accused her of being fetish. Toin even said that Caroline had also accused her of being fetish, that oh, Choma had said that oh, don't eat at Mariam's house. In fact, don't even att attend Mariam's dinner party. This person just joined the group. We don't know this person. Uh, we cannot just be eating in anybody's house. If we were to have events at hotels or even restaurants, that would have been different, blah, blah, blah. Don't eat in our house. If they give you food, say thank you, don't eat. If they want to give you water, use your hand to open the water so that they will not collect your star. Mariam said a lot of things. And whilst Mariam was speaking, Caroline was shocked. And she was like, Choma, did I say all these things to you? Oh, like, Caroline had a lot to say. 
But she could not say what she wanted to say because, of course, Mariam did the right thing by telling her, listen, if you want to defend yourself, wait, let me finish speaking. But then, guys, once again, Uti did not ask Caroline or even allow Caroline to defend herself. So what happened was that Mariam said all what she said. Chama herself was given the floor to speak. Caroline did not want to go. She called me, told me, do not go to Mariam's house. You don't know, these girls do jazz. You don't know anything. Lagos girls, you are naive, London, blah, blah, blah. I said jazz. She was like, yes. When you go there, don't eat anything. Don't eat anything. Eat, just say that, oh, your stomach is hurting. They give you water. Open the water, but make sure you open it by yourself. She said, and of course, she almost said the whole lot. Oh, Caroline told me this about towing. Caroline told me this about the ladies. Caroline said da 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 ra da ra da ra da ra ra ra. Caroline said everything. Caroline accused the ladies and that Mariam and towing of being fetish. Caroline told me not to go to Mariam's dinner party. Blah blah blah. And guys, the story was a lot. It was a lot, and it made me wonder that okay, how is it possible that Mariam told Chioma or rather Caroline? told Choma not to go for the dinner party when she herself was going for the dinner party and had been instructed by the production team to go and pick Chioma from her own house so that they could go together in the production's car because of traffic. How was it possible, guys? I mean, the stories were not really adding up. But then my own bone of contention was with Uti. Uti not giving Caroline the floor to speak and defend herself, guys. For me, that was all shades of shady. Once again, it made me feel like there was a deliberate and conscious attempt to portray Caroline as the villain, as the bad person of the group. And, you know, whilst Chuma kept on talking and talking and talking, Caroline was just shocked, like she was speechless. And all she kept on saying was just, Chuma, you lie so confidently. You are manipulative. You are a mean girl. You said a lot of things and now you are lying. And then Caroline said also that um, when they had been having a conversation at the good hair space, um, Chuma had been the one that asked her that, oh, tell me about Toyin. And she had said that, oh, Toyin is a nice person. And guys, we did not hear any more of that explanation from Cam um, Caroline because, once again, Uti did not allow Caroline to continue with her explanation. Anyways, moving on. This was where Uti had now asked that very, in my opinion, ridiculous and dumb question to Laura. Going from, or rather coming from being the villain at the beginning of the season, did you kind of feel redeemed at this point? Because, you know, there's that clip of you saying, and said, <laughs> God, I'm here, you know? Now, oh, Laura, how do you feel now? Do you feel redeemed? Seeing all that has been said about you, blah, blah, blah. And Laura was like, oh yes, she's very happy that it's not like she wants to fight with Caroline, no, but she's very happy because she had been telling them that Caroline is a liar. If Caroline could say that she was pinned to a governor, then Caroline can lie about anything. And then Uti left it at that without once again giving Caroline the floor to speak and defend herself. Honestly, honestly, my head, my head felt like exploding because I was asking myself, what the, what the actual what the hell does Uti mean by, oh, does Laura feel redeemed? What the hell? What the actual freaking hell? Anybody that watched the entire season of The Real Housewives of Lagos, they will attest to the facts, not hearsay, not speculation. Mm -mm. They will attest to the fact that Laura was 100% the most excessive and unnecessarily problematic and toxic housewife. Laura was very, very deliberate and intentional about every single form of negativity that she brought to the show. Laura was exhausting to watch. Laura was draining to watch. Laura was partially entertaining. But there were times when you're watching the show and you are so angry, you're so irritated by all the, the, the nasty things that Laura was doing and saying. Guys, that was exhausting. That was exhausting. And Laura, I will beat my chest and say it anytime, any day, Laura was the villain of the season. Followed by Toyin. Yes, followed by Chama. So guys, when, when Uti asked that question to Laura, I was looking at this Uti and I'm like, Uti, really? You cannot even look beyond your bias. You cannot even allow your, 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 uh, you cannot even allow your bias to allow you do your job properly. Anyways, moving on, moving on. 
What if went ahead and asked um, the two ladies what it would take to redeem the friendship? Looking at the, the way things are now, is there any hope of both of them, you know, going back to being friends? And um, Chama's response was that, you know, rewatching the show, looking at the clips that they've played, that um, obviously she misses some of the moments she and Caroline had, that they were actually good friends, that they even hung out a lot of times, they had fun together while it lasted, that about if the friendship can be redeemed, that it can be redeemed only if Caroline can do away with her lies, that Caroline lies confidently, Caroline lies a lot. And then when Uti asked Caroline the same question, Caroline said for her, she will say what she wants to say in your face. Whatever she says behind your back, she will say it to your face. So for her, she's done with the friendship. Guys, if you ask me for my humble, frank opinion about that friendship, because hey, I was a stakeholder in that friendship. I was fully invested in that friendship, in case you all do not know. I was rooting for those two women. I wanted to see them conquer the world of business with their business acumen with their friendship but then <laughs> if you ask me as the humble stakeholder that i am i would say that those two people are better off being apart yes because choma claiming that oh caroline threw her under the bus in my opinion choma also threw caroline under the bus they both threw each other under the bus and choma in my opinion does not really understand friendship code does not really understands the girl code the way she thinks she does choma still has a lot of learning to do about time and place for events for things to happen you don't just do things anyhow i think you're the only one that has emotional intelligence no choma has a lot to work on herself just as caroline also has a lot to work on herself and guys now i wish that caroline really was given the floor to defend herself maybe just maybe we would have heard our own side of all of those accusations but then none of that was given to her so in my opinion both of them are better off being far apart mm. let Choma enjoy her newfound friendship with the the, the yabo with the toy with the mariam with the laura and let caroline be in her own peace so Chama had said she wanted to clear the air. Guys, we all recall um, the claim that Laura made that, oh, after the fight between Chama and Caroline in Dubai, Chama had come to her room, blah, blah, blah. Laura was really excited. So Chama had said that she never did go to Laura's room. Now, Laura had stood her ground. According to Laura, Chama had come. That it wasn't like it was only Chama that came to her room, but Chama had come together with Tony, Iyabo, and Mariam to her room to come and discuss the fight. That all the ladies, they were talking about Choma's fight in the room. They were talking about Caroline. So Choma had come to her room. Guys, Laura was standing her ground. And Choma was looking like, no, I did not come to your room. Guys, at that point in time, eh, I, I just got exhausted. I told myself, you know what? I don't even know who is lying. I don't know who is saying the truth. Because with this woman, this women, it, it seems as though they keep on twisting the narrative, you know, to vindicate themselves, to make themselves look like the saint. They just keep twisting the narrative. And if you are not careful as a viewer, you end up shooting yourself in the leg because you weren't there. You weren't there, guys. So as for me, I will base my judgment and my conclusion based off of what I am shown on the show. Whatever they do behind closed doors is their business. I don't know who is lying. Period. Finally, <laughs> it was the end of the reunion show, the end of the show season, and Uti had gone ahead to ask the women to share their final words. Now, starting with um, what's her name now, Tony. Initially, she said um, Mugum or sure, whatever, but then later she talked about a lot of the projects that she had in store, um, international projects, homeland projects, whatever. How the show had actually helped to enhance her business helped to set her on the map all over the world that she was really grateful and looking forward to another season um for mariam mariam too is grateful um she has a lot of projects in store that she's not going to share on the reunion but we should watch out she's going to show us and then moving on to caroline caroline <laughs> god caroline made a statement that really like it felt like a gunshot to trauma because it was very obvious that she was throwing that shade to trauma now according to um, caroline the lessons i have learned is number one um salt also looks like sugar hey she said that lessons learned number one she learned from the show that salt also looks like sugar ouch Ouch! That hurt. Ienta. Hi! Ienta. 
I mean, it was it was trauma special expression for me when Caroline made that statement. It was a face for me, yes. And guys, in case you do not know, or I, I'm sure that people actually know, yeah. I mean, salt does not taste good. It's bitter, right? But when you add it to food, it's a food preservative. It's also um, what's it called now? It's also a food um, or a taste amplifier in food, right? But you cannot put salt inside tea because it's going to make the tea harsh in the mouth. It's going to make, make the tea bitter. So instead of salt, we use sugar to sweeten our tea. Guys, I don't know I'm going to explain this thing further to you, but guys, just use your own mind and interpret how that shade works well to describe Choma. Yes, so that was what Caroline said and Choma caught her sob. Yes, her face said it all. That She said that the next thing she learned, you know, from the show is that whenever she has any issues with anybody, she should call them one-on-one -on -one and have a conversation about it. Yes. And she was referring to Laura in this regard that um, she knew that Laura had an issue with her. So if she had known, she would have called Laura one on one so they could have a conversation about it. And then the third thing that she had learned was that if somebody offends her, she should not carry it in mind. Otherwise, when she blows up, it's going to erupt. You know, the explosion will be huge. And then she also talked about how she's going to go on, you know, with her family, um, projects, businesses and all whatnot. Those are the things that she's actually looking forward to. And then for Laura, she's looking forward to more reality TV shows. Yes, of course, to bring more drama. And um, she's also looking at going into acting. And guys, the sweet part of that, you know, moment was Caroline agreeing to Laura to go into acting, telling Laura that that she would do great at it. I'm like, wow, okay, this is another form of women supporting women. You know, and at that point in time, it was very obvious that Caroline really did not really have anything negative in mind towards Laura. Yes, and it showed that she actually regretted the fact that they both had numerous fallouts on the show. And then moving on to Yabo, she's looking forward to going back into her acting, TikToking, influencing, and all whatnot. And then she has also learned to mind her business, to carry her own luggage and everybody else should carry their own baggage as well yes that's see what happened to her on the show yes we know that she was actually referring to caroline and then finally to chama chama who had caught her sub earlier <laughs> from caroline's lessons learned had decided to use caroline's words back at her that oh she too she has learned that salt also looks like sugar <laughs> I think so also the fashion too. I agree with that. <laughs> and then she had talked about, oh, she's going to um, go into influencing because influencing looks good. You know, the old um, TikTok thing, she's doing it and it's making sense. And she's also going to go back into loving and bonding more with her family and, you know, just having fun. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this video is already lengthy as it is. I still have a lot more to say, but I'm going to re reserve it for our YouTube live stream tomorrow by 3 p.m. WAT. So please do not forget to join us. And guys, I'm still so super excited about my interview with the Nigerian Tribune newspaper. So if you want to know a bit more about me, Gloria Elijah, for those of you that have been asking, oh, Gloria, we need a question and answer session with you on this channel. I'm still going to do that, but um, just go ahead and click the link in the description box to catch up and to know more about me. Maybe not a lot, but just more about me. Yes, my life, how I started YouTube and what I've been doing so far. Just go ahead and read that interview, okay? And please feel free to share it, all right? There's love in sharing, so feel free to share that link with as many people as you want, all right? And I'll see you guys on another episode of Frankly Speaking with Gloria Elijah. Do enjoy your TGIF and have an amazing day. Bye.